At version one, we put a lot of thought in what it takes to create a data-driven DevOps organization. And it really all starts with flow metrics. Um, but we have a challenge in DevOps, and that's um, the minute we convert our backlog items into source code and then convert that source code into binary artifacts, we lose all visibility into flow. Um, so it's very difficult to track a specific backlog item um, in the form of a binary artifact as it moves through every single stage of our value stream. So creating that capability is, the, is really the first step. We call that affiliation. It's the ability to affiliate a specific backlog item with specific code and then connect that code to specific artifacts and be able to track those artifacts um, as they move from phase to phase to phase and therefore the story moves from phase to phase to phase. Tracking the flow of backlog items across each step in your value stream map is important, but often what people really care about are combinations of backlog items like features or epics. So questions, uh, a product owner might have a question about what's the distribution of this epic across my value stream map right now and how much of this epic has already been delivered to my end users. It might be great to understand has every single backlog item in this feature um, made it to a specific stage in my value stream map. Having that kind of visibility is really important. Um, I think the next step in, in creating a data-driven organization is to take this real-time visibility and start to convert it into flow metrics and really um, objective measurements of how your value stream is performing. So the first flow metric that we have to consider is lead time. And that's just how long is it really taking for the average work item to travel from development all the way to the end. So the next set of metrics that we have to track are work in progress or WIP. And I think we do a really good job of understanding work in progress through development. But the minute we start converting backlog items into code and then convert that code into artifacts or binary objects, it becomes really difficult to track work in progress as those binary artifacts move through each phase of delivery. So being able to understand and, and, and visualize work in progress um, even after stories get coded into binary artifacts and understand exactly how much value we have stacking up at every phase of delivery. For example, how much work in progress do we have in staging right now? That's the next set of metrics that I think are really important and really helpful. So some other concepts that we borrowed from Lean are the, the, the notion of touch time versus wait time, where touch time is the amount of time we actually spend adding value to a user story or a defect, and wait time is the amount of time it spends stationary waiting for some next step or some next activity. And if you, if you can calculate the touch time, if you can calculate the wait time at a work item level, that starts to provide some really powerful information. Um, if you know the cycle time um, through a particular phase of delivery, so for example, through the quality assurance phase, if I can express my touch time and my wait time, I can, look at, I can now start to look at how efficient is this phase? What's the ratio of touch time over the overall cycle time of that phase? And that, that really starts to show us where the waste is, where the friction, and where the opportunities are to start streamlining flow. And so it's good to understand over the course of a release, for example, what percentage of work uh, has been introduced into this release that can't be tied back to specific business value, or what's the percentage of rogue commits, for example. So in addition to simple risk measures like the percentage of rogue commits in a code base, um, we're starting to imagine some real innovative and exciting ways to think about risk as backlog items move through um, our value stream maps. And one of the ones that I find most exciting is cyclomatic complexity or fragility. Now we've been able to measure the cyclomatic complexity and fragility of our code bases for years and we've got great tools that help us do that. But what we haven't been able to do until now is start to measure the cyclomatic complexity or the fragility of specific backlog items, specific user stories, or specific features, for example, or answer questions like what's the relative fragility of release A compared to release B or release C? So one last class of metrics that I think is interesting um, with regard to risk is change visibility. And, and we can now track how dynamic our code base is through various stages of our value stream. And we would expect our code base to be very dynamic in early stages of our DevOps value stream. But as we get through closer to quality assurance or certainly beyond the definition of done or beyond code complete, we would expect that, expect that code base to be very stable. So being able to understand the rate of change and how dynamic um, our code base is as we approach various stages of delivery is really important because um, the more change we have later in the value stream, the more risk that we have. And I think there's a lot of study and research around that, but providing that visibility to all stakeholders and being able to measure that objectively, I think is really important.
So we've talked about some flow metrics and some risk metrics. And these are just a couple of examples of how you can begin to build a data-driven DevOps organization and ultimately help you get good at getting better.